they're not like this crazy passing team where they're going to wow you with their ball movement. We all know Shea. Like, Shea's just a one of a kind, herky jerky, gets wherever he wants to go. No one can like find him. He's impossible to guard. No one can, no one can get a hold of him. I just think more than anything else, two things are beginning to make this the number one team for me. Shea, Jalen Williams, wing good Jalen Williams. And not that the other one's Jay, not good. We call him J Dub. J Dub. J Dub is is how we talk about him. Okay. Shea, J Dub, and Chet Holmgren already like look look like a, a traditional big three. Just the way they complement each other and how good they all are. Um, that's like come together. It's a real it's fast. a foundational three guys that we know are gonna be in our lives for a long time. Number one ball handler, all around big man, wing in between them. It's perfect. Yep. It's unbelievable. Um, then you have sort of the interesting, like, how do they fit all the pieces around them? I mean, Dort is Dort. He does what he does. The giddy thing. We've seen now two games in a row. He's made a lot of threes when people don't guard him. Like Porzingis didn't guard him last night. He made four threes. That was but the Celtics than, game plan last night. Hey, Josh Giddy, yeah, go ahead. Think, knock yourself out. I think out. the Wolves, the game before, same thing. He made four threes. But more than anything else, what's so interesting about this team to me is, like, you know the history of the league better than anyone. This is not a thing that happens like teams this young do not get this good ever. And the teams that have been this young and this good, like the Oklahoma city thunder team of 10 years ago with Durant and Harden and Westbrook get there. At least in that case on the back of like incredible young athleticism and, and not, not that they didn't have basketball talent and IQ. They did, but like Durant is the seven foot unicorn. Serge Ibaka is jumping out of the gym. Russ is like a locomotive, et cetera, et cetera. They just overwhelm teams with force and speed. This team has some of that. Like Chet is big and mobile and Jalen Williams is a tank. J-Dub is like a tank with these step back jumpers at yep. the end of games. But they play with like a calm and a maturity and a lack of mistakes that is like, I, I just don't ever remember a young team. Like if you just looked at them from like on a blurry non HD TV from 15 years ago where you couldn't see their faces and how young they looked. You'd be like, man, this team, this team's been through the wars. Like they don't have to turn the ball over. They make the right pass every time. They make the right read in space. Like they just don't play like a team that's their age. And they are, I mean, you've been on the bandwagon all year before the season. Credit to you. Like I didn't think they'd make this big of a leap. And you've also been on the, they're ready to win now. Like they can make a trade and be a championship contender. Like they're, they're a contender right now. It's, it's, I watch them and it's part enjoyment and part, like, what the hell am I watching? This is not supposed yeah. to happen. There were some historical signs this could happen because they, they had, and that was part of my case before the season, why I thought they could be a top three seed because they were hitting these little checkpoints. Even last year going 40 and 42 without Chet. It's like, all right, let's add Chet. What Jalen Williams did in the, in the last two months of the year, and if Shea can go up a tiny bit of a level and, and the conference is kind of funky, 50 wins. I, I really believed in it. I think the part that I didn't, I, that I underestimated was the Shea part because it's just happened too many times now. I, I went on Termini and Eddie's show yesterday and I was saying, I, to me, we always throw around the phrase top five guy, but at some point you really have to like name your top five. And to me, he's bumped out Tatum at this point. And um, I just think he's one of the five best guys in the league. Over and over again, He's either beating the other best guy in the team or he's matching them, but he's never getting beaten by those guys when it turns into a mano a mano thing. And yesterday, what was so interesting, there, there were three possessions where they won the game. They're all on offense because Celtics offense was actually pretty good down the stretch. Two Shea, Chet, little pick and pops where Chet hit a three and Porzingis didn't come out in time. And then the third one was they got they wanted to get Shea on a switch on Derek White, which is nuts because Derek White is, is great, but they want to get him off Tatum. And Jalen Williams was on Tatum with the ball. And he's like, fuck it. And just went, just went by him and scored the in the last minute the most important thing. When he did that, I was like, oh, you guys are ready like now. So I don't, I guess the question is, what's the trade? By the way, I had them number one too. I, but, and uh, not, not recently by it. They, they've been the team I've watched the most this year other than the Celtics. I enjoy watching them the most. They passed Denver for me because Denver's just so clearly in a, we won the title last year. We're going to be fine. Don't worry about us. We'll see you in April. And OKC night after night has been the star of the league. Well, and and people know us 
uh, both of us, like for a team to pass Jokic's team in the league pass rankings is very, very hard to do. And I'm glad you brought up those SGA Chet pick and pops at the end of the game, because that's the kind of maturity I'm talking about. Like as soon as they moved Porzingis from Giddy to Chet, they pivoted right. Like they didn't waste one possession. Like, okay, now we got the big guy on Chet. Let's go pick and pop and see if KP yeah. can get out there like right away. It was really, they're just, they're well, well, Mark Dagnall too, man. They're well coached. Dagnall might have a case for best coach in the league now. Because, I, I and I, I was feeling that way. can't go there. Best coach in the league. I'm just saying he has a case. I'm not saying I'm, I'm ready to call him the best coach in the league. But I, I've started thinking about it last year when they had no big guys at all. And they were always in these games. And I remember seeing them in person against the Lakers. I've talked about this, the LeBron scoring record night. Yeah, I was there too. And there was that long, long break. And most of the time you see situations like that and the other team is just like, man, this is such an honor to be here. LeBron is incredible. They were pissed. They wanted the game to keep going. They ended up winning the game. They, Presti clearly has figured out some sort of secret sauce that, you know, smartly, unlike Daryl, when Daryl had figured out some inefficiencies in the late 2000s, he's like, I'm going to give a long interview to Michael Lewis and talk about (laughs) all the things I'm doing. And the league was like, wait, what are you doing? And they stole like nine of the things. Presti, my guess is he looks at length and competitiveness. I think I think he specifically targets certain guys that just are wired differently. And Kaysan Wallace is like that too. That guy, he comes in, what, 17, 18 minutes a game. He'll guard the best guy on the other team. He hits threes. He plays under control and he's really competitive. And over, you know, they'll miss with the occasional Poku, but even Poku makes sense for what that Presti model is because long, gangly, weird guy, but he's kind of maybe something. So they rolled the dice with him. But don't you think, is there anything else? Competitiveness and, and length? And, but, is- and also IQ recently, the last the last few hmm. years, he's been looking for guys who can really make the next play in open space. And Poku is the kind of swing you can take when you have more swings than anybody else. So you can afford to say, all right, this guy's just like a right. weird seven, whatever, whatever he is and and take a shot at him. But yeah, that's they, what- that's so weird why they didn't take Shangun. I'm, I'm I know, still you're, stunned you, that they ne- didn't you'll take never that. Get over, you'll never get over I, that. Eight teams in a row passed him up. We were doing, we did the post-draft preview and we were like, oh my God, like how does he go 16? But he just felt like a classic OKC guy. Um, so we I both do think had OKC needs, number one. I do think they need one more big body and they have to decide those, those role guys they have who all play like 13 minutes a game. Are they better off cashing in and getting somebody who could play like a legitimate 22 to 25 who's got real experience. I think they're in a dangerous spot because you almost don't want to mess with this. This team plays so well together and they all have Shea's personality. That's another thing. That's I think part of his MVP case has to be the team has taken on what his personality is, which I think is part of, yeah, that's what happened with Jokic the last couple of years. Like that team is unselfish like Jokic. Shea, the team is like calm, and in control, and they play really hard. And that guy, can you name five things about Shea? I, I think he's the most unlikely NBA superstar we've had in 15 years. I don't know anything about the dude. He doesn't really do interviews. He's not a big social media guy. Um, he's just atypical with all these other dudes. You feel like you have so much knowledge of every piece about them. He's just like this mystery dude that just comes in and, and takes on all the other guys. Like, think about Tatum. We know like what Tatum's kid looks like. We watch him shoot game, shoot shots before games. And Tatum's in all these commercials. I'm sure Shea would do commercials, but um, he's just, he's the most mysterious star we've had in a long time. Well, and there have to be, I have not done it, um, whether here or in Oklahoma City or anywhere, but there have to have been national writers in addition to local writers who have put out the ask of like, hey, I'd love to do a 20 minute sit down with Shay or like do a big thing on Shay and Shay's background and like, what's yeah. this guy like? And just like, I, unless I've missed it, like that just, he doesn't care. I've like, that's either, either no one's asking or the thunder and or Shay are saying no. And like, we just don't see that piece ever. Like I'm, I'm yeah. Well, I don't know much about him. One of my big regrets, just that, as you know, I love being right and love predicting things ahead of time. I watched Shay for that whole year. I never saw this. I knew he was good. We all knew like, this guy's good. This guy can be a starting guard on a championship team. There's, he has, he's really good defensively. He's really smart. There's a lot of great stuff here. I never saw 30 points a game and 
night after night, just just <laughs> just outplaying the best guy on the other team. Well, and you ever. rack your brain like a game list last night will make you do it. Is where you're having the conversation. Like I was thinking to myself, like who's who's the best guy to guard him? And there is no best guy. And and it's, you're just, it's like, a six nine guy basically. The, the Celtics have like five of them. Yeah, and it it didn't matter. Like like who is I don't even know. Like is it is it prime Kawhi? Is it what's left of prime? Kawhi? I don't even know who it is. But like you want to say like, hey, would Giannis be on on him be interesting? But Giannis is like not guarded quick guards all that well compared to how he does other stuff. And Shea can get those guys in foul trouble too. That's the other thing. It's like, oh, cool, you're gonna put this guy in. I'm just gonna get a foul on him. I thought of something last night, an an analogy that I'd never thought of watching him. And as soon as I thought of it his entire game clicked into my brain. You're not a hockey guy, but the way he plays is the first basketball player, and it makes sense because he's Canadian, right? The way he moves and kind of rotates around and waits and picks his spot and then strikes and comes back, it's like watching a great hockey forward. Like if you watch like uh, Connor McDavid on, on Edmonton, See, now, now I'm losing you because of No, he analysis. was the guy everybody tanked for, right? Yeah, yeah, There was like a great tank year of, in hockey. Or you watch Gretzky or you watch any great hockey forward. They're always like gliding around. They never seem like they're moving full speed, but they have the speed and they're always kind of waiting to strike. They're like almost like Panthers or Cougars, like just in the wilderness, just kind of waiting to make their move. And the best hockey players, they float around and then all of a sudden they're doing something. And I was thinking about that last night. Like, if he doesn't get what he wants, he brings it back. And it's like, oh, he's not, all right, he's going to, re- oh, no, he's not resetting. He's going to the basket. Or, oh, he has the defender on yo-yo. He's flying by him. Oh, he pulled back, step back three. Oh, he's, and it's just like, he's constantly moving. He's not for, a, you know, I don't, I wouldn't consider him a heliocentric guy, but it's not like one of these, they give him the ball and he's just like, all right. And everything has to set for eight seconds as he decides what to do. He's always in motion. And I think that's what's so hard for him to guard or for people to guard him. It's interesting you say that because I've been thinking about I'd like to go back and watch him from like two years ago when when this the breakout began. Mm. Um, Because to me, watching him this year. We all know that like his change of pace and herky jerky style, like that's kind of his trademark. Like you just can't get a hold of him. I feel like this year he's been smarter about yeah, I'm really good at the herky-jerky change of pace stuff, but like sometimes it's better if I just go because I'm also right. really, really fast in a straight line. And I feel like he's been smarter about leaning that way a little bit more in the right spots and just like, oh my God, he just blew by this guy. And like, maybe it's time to dispense with the herky-jerky every single time and just go. And like, I, I feel like he's better at that. We've only gotten through one team. I'm aware. I'll, I have one last shape point for you. We have to, you know, we do those ringer top 100 rankings. If yes. you worked with us, you would hate it. It would, it would, I can only imagine what your response is. Hey, Zach, we need your top hundred. You would just be like, oh my God, I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> I, I did you, it you're once. It was murdering hard. me. Um, this is going to, you, this would be a spit take from you. And I'm going to say this as somebody who thinks Stephen Curry is the ninth best player of all time. I think I have him ninth. I have him a spot ahead of Kobe. He's one of my favorite athletes of all time, much less favorite basketball players. I had Shea bump him and Tatum out of my top five. I gave Shea the fifth spot and had Curry six. And Curry has the playoff experience. 2022 finals just happened. He's an amazing player. But if I'm just judging right now when I'm watching day after day, Shea's just a little more consistent than Curry is. And in April, Curry might jump him in my rankings again. But from what I've watched these first 10 weeks, Shea is the best guard in the league. And I, I don't, even know if it's debatable. Well, I know you don't count Luca as a guard. I mean, he's uh, him and Jokic are they're some different position. I don't even they're over there. But he, he I mean, I don't think the Curry thing is a spit take. Uh, Curry's okay, good. Been in, he was in a long shooting slump until last night when the Warriors beat Orlando. I think he had thirty six. But you know, All Star stuff came out, and so we started picking tentative All Star starting fives and yeah. all that. Like, I don't. I don't think there's really a, an argument that Steph should start over S- SGA. Now, Luca is listed as a guard. I know you're personally offended by that. And everyone on the panel has Well, you've Luka stood next at, to him. He's 240 pounds. Yeah, like, he's a big if guy. he's a guard, I don't know how he counts. But Luca and SGA were the choices for everybody. And like, there, wasn't re- there was no pushback about like, well, Curry. I mean, historically, Curry is Curry. This year, what this dude is doing is ridiculous. Can I read you one last thing and then we got to take a break? So... We're not allowed to, to, 
obviously wager on the NBA awards because we have votes. But it always is interesting to me when we get to early January how off some of the odds are. So on FanDuel right now, the clutch player of the year, who do you think is the favorite in the betting market right now for the the stupid clutch player of the year award that I don't even really fully understand? Who would you pick? The favorite? The favorite right now on January 3rd, clutch player of the year. Tyrese Halliburton. He's third at plus 650. For some reason, Dame is first at plus 340, and then Shea is plus 340. I I thought Shea was going to be like minus 300. Like, I, I just like, I don't know how you can be more clutch than him. We've watched him make game winners. We've watched him over and over again beat the best players in the league head to head. Like, I, then I don't even, I guess I don't understand this award. Well, and the that, first month of the season, the Bucks had that stretch where like, Every win they had was a close win, and Dame had it. a bunch of big shots. I think maybe that's still fresh in everybody's minds. Yeah, but it was uh, stupid.